What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down the top four best routes from the NFL Week 17. So today we're going to be talking about how you guys can attack zone coverage with a pressure step, how to use a rocker step, and then a release that you can use off the line to create some separation against a DB who's in a catch technique position, okay? So I hope this video gives you guys a lot of value. And also, guys, if you're a receiver and you want a video where I give you 20 different press releases with specific drills to work those press releases and the situations in-game that you can use those press releases, check out that very first link in the description. It's a 45-minute long video where we discuss 20 different releases, specific drills, and then when to use them. Hope to get you guys on that soon. Let's get started with this breakdown. So first things first here, we see this DB is kind of in this zone coverage position, right? Face it towards the inside. Head up. We want to make sure that we try to get to this blind spot. That's the entire goal. So let's watch this thing full speed. So Evans does a great job using the pressure step, get to the blind spot, snap it off, and then be able to create some separation. All right? So now... What's he trying to set up? Off the line, we want to make sure that we attack that front hip or that weak hip, as some people like to call it, and give him that move to the inside to self-fade, right? Because the whole goal of this, especially against zone coverage, the whole goal of zone coverage is to self-fade. So on this stop route, you see when he comes off here, he's attacking the leverage, closing the gap, right? We want to try to step on this DB's toes. That's the entire goal of what I'm trying to do here. Step on that DB's toes, give him that jab to the inside, give a little head and shoulder fade, because this is how you run a fade against maybe like a zone DB or like an off DB who's in this position, right? You give him that little head fake to the inside. You try to slip behind him and beat him over the top with some speed. And his worst nightmare when he's in this off coverage situation, zone coverage, is getting beat deep. He does not want to get beat deep. He does not want to get beat over the top. So when we threaten him to the inside, maybe get him sitting to the inside a little bit, then I work to that blind spot. That forces this speed turn, especially if you have speed off of that pressure step. They call it a vertical set or a pressure step. So this like this little vertical set step right here gives him some burst, gives him a little bit of a burst, so he can run and have some speed to this blind spot. Because when this DB turns, he's going all off a of feel. So if he feels us being super choppy with my steps, he feels me slow down my speed, he's going to break down on this thing, right? Or he's not even going to speed turn in the first place. So we got to make sure that after we make that jab right here, we give this little jab. I burst up to that blind spot, keep my chest forward. I'm really pumping and driving my arms and running in full stride to force this guy to speed turn out of there so I could snap it off and create some separation. And you could do this on any route, fellas. You could be here, and you could run this stop route like Evans does where he just gets to the chains and hooks up. He drops his hips aggressively. So he could sit, or you could do the same thing on a comeback route. You could do the same thing on a dig route. But anything to force this DB to turn his hips, get to his blind spot, and make him believe fade. The whole goal is let's make this DB believe fade. Let's get him to turn his hips out of there so I could snap it off. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. Great. This is how you attack zone coverage, fellas. You manipulate that blind spot. You try to go where this DB cannot see you because where should his eyes be? His eyes are obviously on Evans here, but his eyes could be in his zone's coverage situation on the quarterback if he's bailed out a little bit more, right? So let's work to that blind Line spot. Let's uh, threaten him with the fade. And obviously, Mike Evans is a big guy. He's a vertical threat just off the line, right? So we got to make sure that we use that to our advantage. Let's watch it again, full speed. Pressure step here, get to the blind spot, snap this thing off, force the speed turn, and be able to get some separation from this DB. Great job by Evans. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this release here against a catch technique DB. I love this release. Um, maybe could have gotten, ball was a little bit underthrown, um, so maybe could have gotten a little bit more separation. But anytime we get, so let's, let's talk about why this release works and why this is such a great route and really why this route works, right? Not bad recovery by the DB, but I think a better thrown ball obviously helps. So when we got a DB here and we're necessarily like off the ball and he's in this like catch technique right they call it a catch for a reason because he's trying to catch us when we run out he's trying to let us think that okay i can just take the inside he gets hands and then knocks us off our router i can just take the outside he gets hands and forces us to the sideline that's what they're in this like catch technique quote unquote so when we come off here and we attack his leverage we want to go straight towards his midline i want to try to get him on those heels you see how he goes with this kind of foot fire release he gives his head and shoulder fake to the inside that's where we got to be right because what's that db going to be looking at he's going to be looking at my hips so if i throw my hips to the outside here, right? I throw my hips to the outside. I get this DB to jump to the outside. Then I'm able to create some separation and get back up vertical, right? But the whole goal is to close the distance. Anytime you're off the line, right? And you got this situation where a DB's off. And he's about like two to three off or maybe just two yards, maybe one yard off, right? This is about two. We want to close the distance. We want to take the fight to him. We don't want to run around him, right? This is what separates a good route runner from a bad route runner. A bad route runner will just take, or an average route runner, I should say, he'll just take off, right? He'll just go here and be like, okay, I got some space. I'm just going to go try to run around him and beat him with speed. But when you guys get to that next level, right, whether you're a youth guy and you get to high school or high school when you get to college, that's the big jump. Um, 
or a college guy who maybe takes it one step further than that. Everybody's going to be fast. Everybody's going to be a hell of an athlete. So you've got to make sure that you understand the technical points that lead to separation. One of the main technical points off the line when we got a DB who's in catch is closing the gap, right? I want to close the gap of this DB, try to get him on those heels. I throw my upper half whichever direction that I want to put him, and then I get up field. So this is a great job attacking leverage right here. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. So close the distance, give that little head fake. Let's make sure I burst. Ball's a little bit underthrown, but hell of a play downfield. Great job. So now we're going to be looking at this slot. Um, we're going to be looking at Justin Jefferson run this kind of rocker step out route. Okay, so now DB's inside leverage, right? So it's kind of like an off-man look, right? I had somebody say yesterday to me, like, oh, well, you don't get a whole lot of off-man in the NFL. Perfect example right here. Off-man, inside shade, right? So the whole goal is what? What do we want to try to make? And it's very similar to how we manipulated zone coverage with that pressure step in the first example. We want to make him think inside on this rocker step, and we want to make him th turn his hips and think fade, okay? So let's watch this thing again full speed. So he's coming out, great speed, great speed into this cut. That's how you sell fade, that's how you sell vertical, and that's how you can get some separation right so off the line what are a couple different things because like we obviously want this guy to turn his hips because it's going to be a lot easier to break on and out when he's inside shade like this if we get him to turn his hips right so when i come off the line here what makes him turn his hips selling fade so making sure that i'm in a good pad level position i'm not running very tall i'm not chopping my steps i'm in a great pad level position where i come out i'm in an explosive position and my strides are the same you see how jefferson makes this cut right in stride he hits this rocker step this kind of one two rocker Right in stride. His stride does not change. Because when you get up to a break, fellas, and so many guys will do this, they start shopping their feet and then they go one, two, right? And when you start shopping and then you throw the one, two, it's an indicator. The DB's going to sit and break on it, right? But I stay in stride. I keep my speed. That's what gets him to turn those hips and run because I'm a vertical threat. I want to threaten him vertically. That's the whole point. Every single route that you run, you should make him believe something, right? Whether you make him believe you're going out and you cut back in, you make him believe fade and you snap it off, you make him believe fade and you run an out route like this. Now, let's talk about this rocker step right so the rocker is where you go one and then two and you're really focused on selling in this direction you're selling like you're running a post and then you throw yourself back to the inside and you catch yourself with that foot and you accelerate out of this break right so now when i throw this one two it's real important that with my upper half i sell this thing and you see how jefferson's upper half is why i think he's a very great route runner his ability to sell these cuts be able to be in stride in these cuts that's why i think it's one of the best routes that we saw this past week he throws his upper half behind because what we could do is we want to try to force a speed turn out of this db so that's what we've got to do and when we get to this kind of like quote unquote blind spot right here where this DB's turned and he's already got his hips bailed he's going off a of feel so if he can feel us in that blind spot that might get him to either at least hesitate which leads to separation or to speed turn which can lead to separation right so again Jefferson does a great job of doing that now He's obviously an off coverage. When I make this cut right here, it's very important that I win this race back to the ball. That's why I love this love this play because when he goes one, two, and he cuts off of this leg, he bursts off of it. He snaps his eyes around. He's able to get his hips and his shoulders on this 90-degree angle, right? Because where's the ball going to be coming? The ball's going to be coming right here. So it's a race back to that spot. It's a race between Jefferson. It's a race between this DV and now who's going to get there, right? Now, if I take care of my job of selling vertical, I take care of my job of getting separation at the top, making a miss with my upper half selling this route and then accelerating out of the break and i take care of all those things and i run back to the ball he can't win right because i took care of all three phases of the route right i took care of the stem portion which is selling vertical i took care of the break point which is the explosion and getting separation and then i took care of the acceleration which is keeping space right a lot of people can get space on a route anybody can get space on a route but can you keep the separation on a route and that's what jefferson does a great job of doing right here great catch too as well let's watch this thing again full speed one more time then we'll get to the best route I feel from this week. So great job using that rocker step, getting him off, then catching this ball. Now we're going to be looking at Hollywood Brown run this kind of like deeper post route, okay? So he's going to be doing the same kind of rocker step that we just saw from Jefferson. A little bit change of tempo. So let's watch this thing here. Attacking leverage gives him this one, two, forces the speed turn that time a little bit different than the Jefferson route, but it's the same kind of technique, right? So now when we're here and we got this kind of off man coverage, right? We want to try to sell like what on this? You're going, you're running a post, right? I want to try to make him sell like I'm going vertical, right? I'm giving him this move to the inside, giving him a pop to the inside and breaking out vertical. That's the key that we want to sell right here. So you see how Je um, Brown, excuse me, Hollywood Brown closes the distance with this DB. He's attacking this DB. He's attacking that midline, trying to step on those toes because that gets him on those defensive. And you see how that kind of gets him to turn those hips. Because when we close that gap with him and we're attacking to the outside, my eyes are to the outside, my pad level is going to the outside, that forces him to turn. There comes a point where a DB has to turn his hips. 
He can't shuffle with you the whole time down the field. He can't stay square in a backpedal all the way. If you, There comes a time where he has to turn and run with you. And I can manipulate him with my eyes, manipulate him with my upper half. And you see how Hollywood Brown gives him this quick little one-two. And you see how much he's able to throw his upper half here. He sticks this thing. It's a powerful cut. It's not a soft cut. And you see how he's almost throwing his hip out. Because, again, where's that DB? Where should he be watching? He should be looking at those hips. So you want to throw your hips out to throw this cut. And then, again, that forces that speed turn. But, again, they call it a speed turn for a reason because he should have some speed out of this break. So what I can do as a receiver is I know, okay, this DB is going to be speed turning. i got to win the race. And, again, it ties into all those three phases. Phase one, we're closing the distance, stepping on the toes. Phase two, I'm getting separation with my other half. I'm selling with the, or my upper half. I'm selling with this rocker step. And then phase three, I'm accelerating out of the break. I'm pumping my arms and running so I can make this play. And, again, winning the race back to the ball. You take care of all three phases of the route. You do all three phases correctly, especially again a DB who's a, against a DB who's an off man or zone. You take care of all three phases. We should not lose the route. It's more about what we do wrong than what the DB is going to do right. Let's watch this thing again, full speed one more time. So he's coming off here, closing the distance, throw that one two, get him to speed turn. Let's make sure we accelerate off of that break. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate. It. I hope this video kind of helped you guys in terms of um just what to do off the line. You know how to attack zone coverage and then really how to attack an off man coverage look and again guys if you want a video where i break down 20 different press releases 20 different ones is all the releases that you can teach you can use that you could take with you into a game when to use them and then specific drills to work on those releases check out that very first link in the description i'll see you guys next time